uh, again, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Jeff Lake. I'm a lawyer here in town. Uh, I spent a few minutes at the first reading talking about some of the legalities that this council will hopefully consider when evaluating the vote on the upcoming uh, ordinance. I wanted to follow up with a few things that we didn't discuss last time, but I think they're going to be critically important when it comes to making your decision. First is why the ordinance needs to be amended even further. We've taken some good steps, but there's a couple more things that I think need to be implemented in order to make this a fair regulation as opposed to a prohibition. And they're very simple. One, we need to expand the zones where medical marijuana dispensaries should be permitted to operate. Uh, I would propose that we do it consistent with the medical marijuana task force recommendations. Secondly, is to reduce the amount of setbacks uh, right now, the way that the setbacks are incorporated, it is almost impossible to find not only a proper zone, but something that is within 600 feet of anything. California state law requires that medical marijuana dispensaries be set back 600 feet from schools. I think that is what we need to look at, and we need to consider the amendment along those lines. And lastly, is the issue of amateurization or grandfathering. Those are two concepts that are very similar. Number one, grandfathering means that an existing business that is a pre-existing non-conforming use be allowed to remain under certain circumstances. Secondly is amateurization, which means that if a business is going to be required to leave, that it's given a reasonable amount of time in order to make that transition. I think a combination of those four amendments will get us where we need to be on a reasonable legislation uh, that will give the medical marijuana community, the public safety, uh, and the citizens of San Diego everything they need when it comes to safe access. I wanted to make a couple other points for you to consider, and one of those I think is important for you to realize that you may not know, and that is what the city's current position is in regards to medical marijuana dispensaries. And what it is right now? Nothing. There is no ordinance, there is only an opinion from DSD that says there is no applicable zone for a medical marijuana dispensary. Uh, that is very bad, it's very broad, I think that's unenforceable by itself, which is one of the reasons we've seen the city attorney's office resort to the current enforcement policy against medical marijuana dispensaries. And that is, the city attorney's office is expending a tremendous amount of pressure on the landlords. They're not going after the dispenser operators themselves. They are expecting, encouraging, and are positively uh, intimidating landowners to sue their tenants. And that's just wrong. That's bad government. This is a city issue. This is not an issue where a landlord in a depressed economic uh, setting, commercially particularly, should be required to sue their own tenants to enforce a government policy. That's not the way this needs to be done. And I know that's what's being done because we're involved in many of those cases right now. So first, please, take this out of the hands of the landlords that are reluctant at best to sue their own tenants and take money out of their own pockets and leave their commercial spaces open. <coughs> Make sure that this council does the right thing and enact reasonable legislation. One of the things that I've spent much time speaking with many city civic leaders about is federal preemption. I know that everyone here is worried about the conflict of law between federal and state law, and a lot of legislators are concerned about their downside liability exposure <coughs> for enacting a local ordinance that may be in conflict with federal law. That question's been settled, folks. It was settled uh, by the California Supreme Court in the Qualified Patients versus the City of Anaheim case. When it comes to the enforcement of Senate Bill 420, in which the legislature of this state delegated the responsibility of local zoning to the local municipalities, there was an issue as to whether or not a local city or county could enact a law that may be in conflict with federal law. When it comes to zoning, particularly the ordinances requiring the operation of businesses that are compliant with state law, there is no federal question. There is no federal preemption. There is no need for anyone here to worry about the federal government coming in and trying to overturn a law that you enact when it comes to the regulation of medical marijuana collectors and their dispensaries. Please just dismiss the idea of federal preemption. It shouldn't be a concern. We need to be talking about compliance with state law. Now, one thing that the federal and state governments do agree on is that the amount of revenue that
that's generated by the medical marijuana industry is significant and it's important. So the question becomes, how do we, as a city, take good dollars, whether they're from federal tax dollars, whether they're from sales tax dollars, whether they're from fees or taxes that can go directly into the city's general fund to be used for public health and safety and lots of other good, productive reasons, as opposed to embarking in a long, arduous, expensive, and I would say wasteful road of litigation and spending of taxpayers' money. And there's an answer to that. And the federal government itself, through the highest tax court in the land, has actually answered this question. And it's in a case called CHAMP versus the IRS. And that case talks about Federal IRS Rule 280E, which says, federal government, this is our federal government again, on the one hand, the distribution of a Schedule I drug is illegal for all purposes, and if the Department of Justice, the U.S. Attorney's Office wants to prosecute you, that's up to them. On the other hand, the federal government says, but if they don't, and as we know, because of Obama's policy position, they're not prosecuting collectors, and you're compliant with your state law here, SB 420, Prop 215, then you need to pay your federal taxes. And the only deduction you can take is the cost of goods sold. Unless you meet the test in the CHAMP case, which says that if you are operating your business as a dual purpose, and in this industry, it's about holistic wellness centers, it's about alternative care, you're probably going to hear lots of testimony from qualified patients that are going to tell you how important their medicine is and why they like homeopathic medicine as opposed to pharmaceutical medicine. That's not what I'm here to talk to you about. What I want to reiterate is the IRS is on your side. They are going to require all medical marijuana dispensaries to serve a dual purpose or they are not going to get their federal tax deductions that they need. They are going to need to operate as holistic wellness centers. We're not talking about fly-by-night dispensaries, folks. We're talking about putting together a system where qualified patients can go to not only get their medical cannabis, but that they can also get other natural and organic healthcare products, where they can get homeopathic remedies, where they can see medical providers that are not discriminatory uh, against medical marijuana patients. That is what we're talking about. That is what everybody in the medical, <coughs> medical marijuana community wants. That is the direction they're going because they have to. They have to, under federal law, they can be compliant and not have to worry about federal preemption. They have to meet the state laws, and if they do, I think you're going to see a dramatic change in the way that medical marijuana is offered to the qualified patients, how it is assimilated into local communities, and how the city can develop a great tax base, how they can have a positive economic influence, how they can drive money straight into the general fund that can be used for lots of projects. We've already heard some testimony about that today. So again, I will urge you to consider four simple amendments. They've already been recommended by the Medical Marijuana Task Force that you employ. They are consistent with state law. They are not in violation of a federal preemption. They will help everyone here. So again, I urge you, please don't waste the taxpayers' money fighting a losing battle. Let's use that money for that. Thank you very much. Yeah.